In Python, lambda functions are frequently called anonymous functions because they don't require any formal definition. So let's take a look at how we can declare and call lambda functions, how we can use lambda functions with multiple arguments, and what the key properties of these lambda functions are. Starting off with declaring and calling a lambda function. So at the top over here, I have declared and called a regular function. And as you would usually go about doing this, I have got the keyword define, and I've defined the function greet, and it's called greet regular because it's a regular greeting function. And all it does is it prints the hello world string. And if I want to call this function, all I need to do is I need to write the name of the function followed by the parentheses. And in this case, they're empty because there's no arguments that I need to input. So if I go ahead and execute this, you will see that, to no surprise, it says hello world in the console output. But how would we do that using a lambda function? So that is exactly what I have at the bottom over here. So to declare a lambda function, you could write the name greet lambda as the name. And then over here is where the interesting part starts. This is where we have the lambda function. And in this case, all it does is it prints hello world and it does not take any arguments. So all it does is as soon as you call this lambda function, it will go ahead and print hello world. And you call the lambda function by simply writing greet lambda and then writing the empty uh, brackets around here. So it, the function call looks very similar to the one of a regular function. But let me just demonstrate that this will in fact call the lambda function. If I go ahead and execute this, you can see that it still says hello world after executing this lambda statement over here. But let's see what happens if we add a couple of arguments to a lambda function. So what could a lambda function with arguments look like? Over here we have declared the lambda function x and it has one argument, which is a, and all we're doing over here is we're adding the value of 10 to the value of a. So if we go ahead and uh, call this lambda function and input an argument, then we can do it in two ways, either using a keyword or, oh, this is, this is horrible writing, but uh, it's meant to say keyword. Maybe I'll abbreviate that with kw. And at the bottom over here, I'm simply using a positional argument. And um, both of these will call this lambda function and execute it. So if I go ahead and execute this, you'll see both of them give me the value of 15 because putting the five into the lambda function for a gives me the value of 15. So how does that work if we have more than two or uh, more than one argument, I'm sorry. So at the top we saw one argument, but now we have two. So how does this work now? If we have two arguments, and in this case, the lambda function simply adds the two values together, we need to input two uh, values into the call. So over here, we've done this with a keyword and with a positional argument, and both will also lead to the correct result. So let me go ahead and execute them. Both um, yield the value 24, because if you add 10 and 14, you get 24 and so on and so forth. So you can go ahead and add as many arguments as you want. Let's go ahead and do this one more time uh, for the last lambda function over here for lambda function z. So I have gone ahead and given this lambda function three arguments and I'm simply adding them together. And over here in the function call, I am simply um, inputting the values as keywords. I wouldn't have to do that. I could also leave these away, but let me just go ahead and execute that. And you'll see that it outputs six because three plus two plus one is six. Now let us have a look at some of the key properties of Lambda functions. The first key property of a Lambda function is that it can be invoked immediately. When you think of a regular function, 
you need to remember that you first need to define it formally. For example, over here we have defined the function multiply and it takes two arguments and it returns the product of them. So it multiplies the two arguments together. And you can't invoke this immediately because you always need to call it first. So over here we have a call to the function multiply and we're inputting the numbers two and two. So we're multiplying two and two together. But with lambda functions, on the other hand, we have the definition and right after that, the definition, we're passing in the arguments. So in this one line of code, we have defined and invoked the function all at once. So to show you that this works, um, let me go ahead and first off execute the normal function. So over here, you can see we're getting the product of two and two, which is four. And at the bottom, if I execute this lambda function, I'm getting the value 35 because it's multiplying five and seven. So bear in mind that with lambda functions, they can be invoked directly uh, right after their definition, which is quite handy. The second key property of lambda functions is that they're frequently used with map, reduce, and filter. With map, reduce, and filter, the first argument is always a function. So over here we have map, filter, and reduce. And the very first argument is always a function. Now, defining this function explicitly is always a bit cumbersome. And that's why we use these anonymous functions very frequently with these three uh, functions, map, filter, and reduce. So let me go and th let me go through these individual examples. So over here with map, what I'm doing is that I'm taking the square and squaring every number in the numbers list. Then for the filter example, I am filtering only the even numbers. So we are going to retrieve a list with only even numbers. And for the reduce over here, what I'm doing is I am simply returning the sum of all the numbers in the numbers list. So let me go ahead and execute all of this. And as expected, the first um, list over here shows you the squared value of each of the numbers in the numbers list. Then we get all the even numbers. And finally, we get the sum of all the numbers put together. So bear in mind that lambda functions are frequently used with map, reduce, and filter because they're convenient as you don't need to always define the function. Now, finally, the last key property of lambda functions is that they can actually also be nested. So over here, you can see that I have a lambda function, a lambda function, and I have given it the name nested lambda. And then I have called the nested lambda function and within the call, I have gone ahead and given it two arguments, which is a number. And in addition to that, I have defined another lambda function within this. So I have a lambda function effectively within another. And if we go ahead and execute this, you can see that it returns the value of 30 because it's taking the 10, multiplying it by two, and then adding uh, a the 10 again. So that is how um, we get the value of 30 in this case. 